Today, I will go over how I brought my sleep apnea score down from 40 to 1 and finally waved goodbye to my CPAP machine forever. This process was anything but smooth and easy. From insomnia, weight loss, and struggling with mass and facing limited clinic support, I had a lot to work through, and I'm afraid there's no magic bullets here, just what it takes. So in this episode, I may wander a bit, as the story of me and my CPAP machine is a fairly lengthy one. Here's what I'll be going over. The main types of sleep apnea, the dangers of sleep apnea going undiagnosed, and finally, how I resolved my obstructive sleep apnea. First, let's define and outline the two main types of sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea are two different types of sleep apnea, a disorder characterized by pauses in breathing or shallow breathing during sleep. While both types involve interruptions in breathing, they have different causes and mechanisms. Obstructive sleep apnea is the most common form of sleep apnea and occurs when the muscles in the back of the throat fail to keep your airway open despite the effort to breathe. This causes a physical blockage of the airway, which results in pauses in breathing or shallow breaths. The person may snore, choke, or gasp for air, often without being aware of it. These interruptions can lead to poor sleep quality and daytime sleepiness. Risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea include obesity, a large neck circumference, family history, and certain lifestyle factors such as smoking and alcohol consumption. Treatment for obstructive sleep apnea often includes lifestyle, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP devices, and sometimes surgery. Central sleep apnea is the result of the brain failing to send the proper signal to the muscles that control breathing. In this case, there's no physical obstruction, but the person still experiences pauses in breathing or shallow breaths during sleep. Central sleep apnea is less common than obstructive sleep apnea and is often associated with other medical conditions such as heart failure, stroke, or neurological disorder. Symptoms may include disrupted sleep, shortness of breath, and difficulty falling or staying asleep. Treatment for central sleep apnea focuses on addressing the underlying medical condition and may involve specific therapies such as adaptive servo ventilation devices. Undiagnosed sleep apnea puts you in danger. Undiagnosed sleep apnea can have significant consequences on your physical, emotional, and cognitive well-being. Sleep apnea disrupts the sleep cycle, preventing you from reaching restorative stages of sleep. This can lead to chronic sleep deprivation, which is associated with fatigue, irritability, mood swings, and a reduced ability to cope with stress. These issues can strain relationships and affect your overall quality of life. Due to sleep deprivation, people with undiagnosed sleep apnea may experience difficulty with concentration, memory, and decision making. This can hinder academic and professional performance, making it challenging to succeed in a school setting and beyond. The fatigue and cognitive impairment caused by sleep apnea can significantly increase the risk of accidents. Drowsy driving is a particular concern, as it can be just as dangerous as driving under the influence of alcohol. Chronic sleep deprivation is linked to higher risk of mental health disorders, such as anxiety and depression. People with undiagnosed sleep apnea may struggle to cope with these additional challenges, further exacerbating their overall well-being. Sleep apnea is associated with an increased risk of high blood pressure, heart attack, atrial fibrillation, and stroke. Inadequate oxygen levels during sleep can strain your cardiovascular system, which can have life-threatening consequences if left untreated, like it did for me. Undiagnosed sleep apnea can also contribute to other health issues, such as type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. The recurring stress on the body caused by interrupted sleep can lead to insulin resistance and other complications, further compromising your health. My own journey began when I discovered that my sleep apnea had already caused some serious health issues. I was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, a heart condition that can lead to an irregular and often rapid heartbeat. This prompted my doctors to send me for sleep studies. Since this was all in the middle of wave one of the pandemic, it was actually quite some time before I could even get the study done. But about six months later, the backlog cleared and I was in. The results were that I had an AHI score of 40. Or to put it simpler, I had interrupted breathing about 40 times an hour, interfering with my ability to reach restful, deep sleep. Obviously, a major factor in all this was my weight. I was about 340 pounds at the time and I had no energy to do anything about it. Adjusting to life with the CPAP machine was no walk in the park. As a mouth breather, I required a full face mask, which made the experience even more uncomfortable. 
The bulky mass made it difficult for me to sleep well at night, adding to my already significant struggles with sleep. To help me overcome these challenges, my doctor prescribes Ovaclone, a powerful sleep aid. While it did provide some relief, I found myself becoming increasingly depending on it to be able to sleep, but I was so desperate to feel rested and for my CPAP therapy to work that I used it. Over time, I gradually adjusted to sleeping with my CPAP mask. I made myself wear it while I was awake and watching TV or just reading a book, just so I could get used to the feeling of the mask on my face and the weird air pressure pushing against the inside of my cheeks and chest. The weird Darth Vader sounding noises it made when I inhaled and exhaled were entertaining in a way, but they also made it hard for me to sleep while wearing the mask. But eventually I got used to it, and finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I started experiencing deep restorative sleep. The first few weeks I actually felt more tired during the day and I had to triple check my reports each morning to be sure the CPAP was working. However, within a month this passed and I started to feel more rested and have more energy. I could feel the difference it made in my life. I functioned better during the day and had more energy overall. It was as if I had been given a new lease on life. I quite literally felt younger. For many years, I mistakenly attributed my lack of energy to aging, when in reality, it was due to my sleep apnea and the absence of restful sleep. Once I began using the CPAP machine successfully, everything changed for me. My energy levels improved, and I started feeling like myself again. Feeling more capable and more motivated, I decided it was time to make other significant changes to my life. I mustered the discipline to adopt a healthier diet and incorporate regular exercise into my daily routine. As a result, I was able to shed considerable amounts of weight. I give full credit to the CPAP machine for helping me regain control over my life when I needed it the most. However, despite my gratitude for the CPAP machine, I still dreaded using it each night. The thought of being reliant on the device forever weighed heavily on my mind, fueling my determination to find a way to eventually say goodbye to it for good. Now, before I explain the steps I took to free myself of the CPAP, I want to emphasize the importance of adapting to it and getting the most out of it first. It's crucial to regain control over your sleep and address your sleep apnea effectively before attempting to move on from the CPAP machine by fixing the underlying causes of your sleep apnea. So my advice is not to rush the process. Don't immediately try to ditch the CPAP machine. Instead, embrace it, learn how to use it effectively, and let it help you get your sleep back on track. Once you've mastered using the CPAP and regained control over your sleep, you'll be in a better position to tackle the next steps in your journey to improve your overall well-being and potentially move on from the device. And, if at all possible, involve your doctor and sleep clinic in the process. Make it clear your goal is to improve to the point where you no longer need CPAP and you would like their support in that. As I lost weight and built my cardio ability up, I started to notice that my CPAP machine was reporting zero apnea events each night. By this point, I had lost an impressive 80 pounds and I couldn't help but wonder if my therapy settings needed adjusting. I reached out to the sleep clinic and they agreed to lower my CPAP settings remotely by one point. Surprisingly, there was no difference in my sleep quality or apnea events. I called the clinic again and requested that they reduce the settings further. They informed me that they couldn't do so without another sleep study and an adjustment to my prescription. Determined to get to the bottom of this, I put in a request for a new sleep study. After waiting several months without any luck, I asked my doctor and then my cardiologist to put in requests on my behalf as well. However, no appointment came my way. I began to suspect the clinic was not interested in helping patients stop using CPAP machines. They also never returned my calls on this. With no other option, I realized that I would have to take matters into my own hands and figure out the next steps on my own. I was more determined than ever to find a way to move on from the CPAP machine if it was no longer needed. And without the help of the clinic, I had this expensive machine and no way to adjust the pressure. But in my mind, it was simply another programmable system. And if the clinic had a way to program it remotely, there must be a way I could as well. But, as it turned out, hacking my CPAP machine was surprisingly simple. Turns out, a helpful respiratory therapist on YouTube explained how to access the admin settings, how to self-adjust and monitor as you go. He explained that so long as my AHI score remained less than 5, I would be just fine. So I got started 
started. Over the course of two weeks, I continued to decrease my settings incrementally, all the while keeping a close eye on my AHI score. Eventually, I reached a level so low that it's typically only used for newborn babies, and the very lowest level the machine could provide. To my amazement, even at this setting, my AHI score remained at just one. This was the moment I had been waiting for, the moment I could finally put my CPAP machine to rest. With a sense of accomplishment and relief, I turned off my CPAP machine and went to sleep without it. And to this day, I haven't needed to turn it back on. My journey with sleep apnea has been a long and challenging one, but I finally managed to overcome it. As I reflect back on it, I want to emphasize that what I've shared with you today was actually the easiest part of the process. To recap, I used a CPAP machine to regain proper sleep, which gave me the energy and motivation to work on my health and weight loss. I dedicated myself to making significant lifestyle changes, engaging in regular exercise, including running and weightlifting, and adopting a healthier diet. Through hard work and determination, I had lost 80 pounds and eventually over 100, and improved my overall health, even transitioning from being a mouth breather to breathing comfortably through my nose even while jogging. It's important to recognize that the real challenge wasn't tinkering with the CPAP machine or adjusting the settings. The most difficult and critical part of my journey was committing to the hard work required to improve my health, fitness, and well-being. It was this dedication to my health that ultimately allowed me to reduce my reliance on the CPAP machine and live a more full life. Let's recap quickly. The main difference between obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea lies in their causes. Obstructive is due to a physical blockage in the airway, while central is the result of the brain not sending the correct signals to control breathing. Both types can lead to poor sleep quality and related health issues, and their treatments may differ. Treatment options such as lifestyle changes, continuous positive airway pressure therapy, or other medical interventions can help alleviate the symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea improve sleep quality, and reduce the risks associated with this condition. So get good at using your CPAP and your life will greatly improve. Now that you've heard my story and the importance of mastering your CPAP machine to get good, deep rest each night, it's time for you to tackle the real work. If you're ready to commit to diet and health improvement, I recommend you checking out my videos on YouTube about the surprising ways our diet can influence our overall well-being. You can find the video on the screen now, or you can find the playlist and the link in the audio show notes. If you find yourself struggling to maintain consistency in your diet and exercise routines, don't worry. I've created a 100% free, comprehensive web course on my method called The Shift. This course is designed to help you make lasting, positive changes in your life 